Alright, so... I'm thinking maybe land going to the north. Um, on this lake. And I'm gonna just touch down, try and get down solid and just run it. And then take off again, come okay. back and check out my tracks. Um, oh wow, I think I might have landed on this lake last year. Um, anyways... Got two cabins there, so if anything goes wrong, we're not totally fucked. Yeah, I think I totally did land on that lake last year. There were a couple of times where it took me the whole freaking run of it to get off, too, on those wheel penetration skis. Yeah. But then uh, I'm looking up at the north end, there's like a, kind of a keyhole, which is a pretty common thing where a river runs into or out of the lake. Right. That gives you an option for getting out of there if you're having trouble climbing for whatever reason. Okay, that off to the right, north of the cabin? Uh, it's almost straight ahead of us actually, the one that I'm looking oh, at. Oh, the one you're looking at, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't see any dark spots on the tracks, which is good. Um, that's the first thing you want to look for is if the tracks turn dark, that means you're probably on top of overflow. Yeah. And the overflow is dangerous for what? Well, overflow means there's water between the snow and the ice of the lake, like liquid water. Right. And there could be a lot. Like, you could get completely stuck. You could potentially be in a couple feet of water. Oh. Do another run here and back down a little better. A little easier making the approach now that there's some distinguishing mark on the snow. Decent little bumps in there.
What I'd like to do is make an oval. So I can turn the whole area, or at least a teardrop at the end, so I can turn around and stop my tracks. Yeah. It can be kind of a bitch. It's weird. You don't want to get too slow because you don't want to get stuck. Right. But you've obviously got you know the ground looping, ground looping, tailwheel tendencies too. It's kind of like doing a step turn on floats, where you're getting a lot more side loading than what you'd probably normally right. be used to. Let's see if I can make it around again and pack it down a little more. Trying to keep it in basically the same tracks.
Like this one wasn't really good. I should have tried to make it a bit tighter. So I wasted a lot of runway there. Yeah. But with the two runs, it'll still be fine for taking off, I think. I think I'll just stop here for a second. Then when you stop, you should let it sit for a couple seconds. Let your skis cool down. And then move forward. Or else you'll freeze. And oh, that's right. Could you hold on to these for me? Yeah, thanks. when we get in the air. Okay, we're all ready to go. between the straight skis and the wheel penetration skis. Yeah. In terms of just take off this, I mean, on that pack stuff, we just accelerated in no time off of that. That was awesome. I figured we would use up a lot more runway. And, uh, Um, and on that amount of powder, man, we would have been. I don't know. Kilo traffic. Two three seven nine Mike. Thanks for the park for three one. What was that? I didn't hear you over the radio transmission. Oh, uh, there's once and once or twice in the turns there where I let it get pretty slow, and I think had we been on the wheel penetration skis, we might have gotten stuck. Yeah. But these things float, man. These have so like a a lot more. Uh, than the wheel penetration skis did. I forget what they were. They were like 2,000 or something. 